Ever wondered what a D&D &D game run by Lucio Fulci would look like? Well, wonder no more. Spoiler alert, the answer is awesome. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Lucio Fulci's sword and sorcery flick, Conquest. Released in 1983, Conquest was an odd departure from Fulci's usual horror fare. It feels sort of like Conan merged with Clash of the Titans with a healthy dose of Star Wars mixed in. And it's not even close to being as good as any of those movies. What Conquest has going for it is its gleeful insanity. It spends half the movie looking for the main plot, finds it, and then immediately dumps it. It features a climax that's basically a two minute afterthought. But it's got plenty of topless women, cheap looking effects, and more than enough Fulci eye zooms to make even the most devoted Fulci files happy. But can Conquest serve up enough splatter to earn the Godfather of Gore another five barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Ed Aborn, Ethan Dusso, and Matt Norcia. Sorry if I butchered anyone's name. If you'd like to sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment and description below. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on whatever the hell this is. I thought I was watching a movie, not land in a plane. Oh, it's a light bright. Do you kids even remember light brights? Christ, I'm old. Also, I'd totally buy a new light bright if they let me recreate Fulci Gore scenes with it. And our first scene has soft focus. We're off to a great start. Plus ghosts, apparently. Or someone really fucked up the film processing. I mean, I don't want to alarm anyone, but I don't think this wedding videographer is getting paid for this work. Even with the double exposure and super soft adult film focus, this wig and beard is hilarious. I'd say if you squint real hard, this is like modern day Brian May hanging out with young Brian May. But you don't even have to squint thanks to all the Vaseline smeared on this lens. Old Brian is just here to deliver some prophecy to young Brian. You must go forth on an epic quest to find the Red Special and defeat the evil forces of Disco and bring rock to the world. As a party gift, future Brian gives him this bow. I don't know, not even three minutes in and I'm seeing a lot of drawbacks to this movie. And double full GI zoom. God damn, this movie has it all and we haven't even got to the credits. Anyway, with the exposition done, old Brian is like, take a bow. Wait, I mean bow. English is weird. Then they vanish. And credits. They spared no expense on this title card. Hey, George Rivero is in this. I hope it's better than Werewolf. And Andrea Occupinti. We last saw him in A Blade in the Dark. All this sweet music comes courtesy of Claudio Simonetti, who clearly didn't want to split his paycheck with the rest of Goblin. These are literally the laziest credits ever. White text on a blurry, out of focus, freeze frame background. An Italian, Spanish, Mexican co-production. Oh boy. And directed by Lucio Fulci. God, I've missed you, Lucio. With the credits over, we still haven't figured out how to get a clear, in-focus shot. Wait a minute, I thought this was Fulci's Conan riff, not his Dances with Wolves riff. I don't even know what's going on here, but basically, topless sexy C-3PO is conducting some kind of Sermon on the Mount. Or maybe she's trying to teach them how to do the YMCA. I'm a live wire. Um, did she just say, I'm a live wire? From there, we hop over to the first annual Running of the Sasquatches. Look, I have no idea what's even happening in this movie. Like, what the fuck is this? It's Dollar General Chewbacca. I will say, this is a super bold aesthetic choice to put the light behind him so we can't see how truly amazingly awful this mask is for sure. But hey, this guy's corpse paint is pretty on point. Teddy Ruxpin here isn't pleased with the old guy's offer, so he clubs him like a baby seal. Man, now it really is corpse paint. They're not done though. They split this chick like she's a wishbone. My guess is they're not wishing for a healthy, happy, prosperous year. And if that weren't weird enough, sexy C-3PO then proceeds to pick her brain. Literally. But wait, it gets even weirder. Now the Wookiees are shotgunning the peace pipe. What the fuck is going on, Fulci? This feels like the version of Star Wars George Lucas never wanted you to see at this point. Man, I'm so high right now I could bark at the moon. <laughs> Look, I know I keep saying it's getting weirder, but goddamn, it really does keep getting weirder because now Brian May has shown up and he's sporting his best man without a face cosplay. Over in another movie, Brian May, who has his face back, saves this chick from a snake. But then he seems disappointed when his chivalrous action doesn't cause her to drop her loincloth on the spot. Nice way to show your gratitude. <laughs> Our heroes, ladies and gentlemen. Well, he's lamenting his incel status, these guys attack. This guy is basically a Skyrim meme come to life. Dude literally was an adventurer and then took an arrow in the knee. Out of ammo, he flees, but running is clearly not his strong suit. 
I say it again, our hero, ladies and gentlemen. And just as things look bleak for the future of Queen, George Rivero shows up and starts beating guys with his bone. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. His bone nunchucks. Not gonna lie, I've seen cereal that's less grainy than the print of this film. Unfortunately, his heroism is short-lived because he gets jumped by these Wookiees who leapt in from absolutely nowhere. This movie does not make one lick of sense, but I am thoroughly entertained. Fulci, you magnificent bastard. But wait, George isn't so easily defeated. He's doling out pimp hands left and right. And you really have to wonder why these Wookiees keep pole vaulting into the scene. Seems like a real waste of energy. But I guess it helps George pull off moves like this. In the middle of all this ass kicking, George has a startling realization. Shit, I think I left the stove on back at the cave. Oh sweet, he's got a book of Ibon symbol tatted on his forehead. Conquest is part of the Beyond Cinematic Universe confirmed. Oh, here's why you're having such a hard time rocking. This thing is totally out of tune. Who are you? My enemies call me Mace. Oh, come on. You don't even use a mace. Your name should be Chuck, goddammit. Nunchucks. It's so obvious. Then he has another startling realization. Shit, I forgot to lock the front door, too. Oh, holy hell. Just look at this shit. What, they couldn't afford stock footage birds? Skyrim guy, who is still in this movie, makes it back to sexy C-3PO. And miraculously, it appears his arrow wound is in the totally opposite leg now. Say it with me. Continuity is hard. I really gotta get more props for that gag. Chuck, aka George, aka Mace, is learning how to use the bow. And he's hunting the most dangerous game of all. Man. Probably just thought it was a Yachty Glanchi. I learn fast, don't I? Eye close up. Drink. And another. Chug. Um, why is like every other goddamn scene in this movie backlit? And it turns out Chuck, aka Mace, was right. He did leave the stove on back at the cave. Hope he's paid up on his cave owner's policy. Budget Brian May is like, maybe this is what older me meant at the start of the movie when he told me beware the disco inferno. They escape and I love that George Rivera will never pass up an opportunity to stealth flex. Back upstairs, the Wookiees gather around the fire. Hope they brought some s'mores. These deleted scenes from the Star Wars Christmas special still aren't as weird as the actual Star Wars Christmas special. Anyway, they appear to be trapped until this snake slithers through, which gives Chuck slash Mace an idea. He just showed us the way out. Um, yeah, sure. Maybe if you can shrink down to snake size. I don't think you guys will fit through that hole otherwise. Naturally, Chuck starts ramming his pole in the hole. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you purrs. I mean, he's using the staff to make the passageway bigger. Back topside, this dude's trying to figure out how to get car insurance. So easy a caveman can do it, my ass. And I guess since Chuck's cave burnt down, they're gonna crash at his friend's cave while the insurance claim is settled. And if you guess the chick Ilya saved from the snake earlier is gonna be here, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. She looks a little pale. And some more backlighting. Jesus, did this movie even have a cinematographer? I close up, top off that J&B and get to drinking. And Chug again. Thoughts and prayers for your liver. We're over a third of the way into this movie and I have no idea what's going on, but sure, let's stop for a sex scene. Except before Brian can close the deal with this groupie, these guys decide to drop in and hand deliver the C block. And here's our hero, once again getting completely overwhelmed by enemies. Maybe Chuck can save him again. Guess not. He's too busy getting pimp handed. He comes to later with his usual look of suave bewilderment. Did I leave the garage door open? And just when things look bleakest, these terrible fake birds return. Huzzah. If you're wondering where Ilias is, he's been captured by Conquest's version of Ewoks. Looks like he's gonna be the main course at the company picnic. If you have no idea who these wolf people are, or why they want Brian May, well, don't sweat it. I have no clue either. We can be confused together. Three people to write this script and it still makes zero sense. At any rate, things don't look great for Ilias, but he's unbowed. Hey, we're back to backlighting scenes again. Chuck, I mean Mace, is totally gonna rescue him, but first he needs to make a few lettuce wraps. Jesus, look at this acting. Action pose. They're about to escape, but Chewie wakes up. He gets boned. Hell yeah. No, I mean with Chuck's chucks, you pervs. And during the middle of the ensuing fight, Chuck has another poorly timed realization. Shit, I think I forgot to schedule my credit card payment. After a bunch of jibber jabber, boobs, and half hearted exposition, we get back to the action. And I zoom. If your liver hasn't revolted yet, 
you know what to do. Anyway, now that we're halfway through the movie, this seems like the perfect time to actually start the plot. Chuck's gonna take Ilias to sexy 3PO's place so they can do things. I knew if they just kept wandering around long enough, they'd eventually find the plot. They set off, and I don't even want to think about how much Rule 34 fanfic has been written about these two. This special moment is interrupted by whatever the fuck this is. These special effects are many things. Special is not one of them. They flee, but Ilias takes a dart in the thigh. Um, he's not dead. Maybe hold off on the Viking funeral, Chuck. It is pretty convenient that there was a perfectly good log raft just sitting there, that's for sure. And remember I said we were going to see sexy C-3PO? Well, there's a change in plans now. There's a small valley near here where a magic plant grows. It's totally a savage cabbage dispensary. And on tonight's very special episode of Dr. Pimple Popper, Ilias gets a boil. Man, if Mace offers to suck out the poison, this review is over. While off hunting for magic mushrooms, Chuck has yet another startling realization. Shit, I think I left the mayo out on the counter before I left the cave for this trip. And it wouldn't be a Fulci movie without some zombies. Why are there zombies here? What purpose do they serve? Look, I don't care. This is finally something I can get excited about. This looks suspiciously like a similar sequence in Zombie 3. I always felt that sequence was a Fulci scene, and this pretty much proves it. In the ensuing battle, Chuck makes a few points. Then things get meta. Yeah, Chuck is fighting himself. I feel like this is Fulci's statement on the duality of man and how we all struggle with our own inner demons. Or something. Jesus, listen to this Foley work. <laughs> I've seen Saturday afternoon kung fu movies with more subtle sound design. Oh look, it's C-3PO's minion avocado face. Afterwards, it turns out the cure for the poison needle is to basically just turn Ilias into a chia pet. Who knew? And it's time for another startling realization. Shit, did I remember to file my taxes? After his recovery, Ilias has a change of heart. I'm not leaving. I'm running away, let's be honest. It's about time he realized he's not the hero of this movie. And don't look now, but I think these two are breaking up. Theirs was a love doomed to fail. They were just from different worlds. Literally. After the sweet sorrow of parting, Chuck's like, shove off, pal. And he has yet another startling realization. Shit, did I leave my headlights on? And this looks like a living, breathing version of a Frazetta painting. If Frazetta were blind and had no hands and had to paint by holding the brush with his feet. So I guess that whole we're headed to sexy 3PO's plot thing was a big fake out. Shocker. Well, Chuck's lost in his thoughts trying to remember where he put his car keys, these guys drop in. Yeah, nothing but net. What the hell are these things? Your guess is as good as mine. Out on the water, Brian May reverses course after some disembodied dialogue reminds him of his sacred duty to save rock and roll. I'm coming to save you, Freddie Mercury. We are the champions. Then he finds these footprints in the sand. Why, are there only one set of prints? That's because Chuck was carrying you. Meanwhile, Chuck's recreating the Tree of Woe scene from Conan. Man, I wish I was watching Conan. And then Ilya shows up and now he has a magic bow. Because he's totally earned that kind of power with all of his heroic deeds, right? <laughs> oh, nice. He leveled up enough to get multi shot on his World of Warcraft Hunter. Murloc down. <laughs> Chuck, meanwhile, is doing his best Little Mermaid impression and has gone under the sea. I bet they got that sweet rack from Adam and Eve. Not gonna lie, I'm amazed Ilias can even work that bow with those chicken wings he calls arms. Might be time to hit the curls, just not in the squat rack, bro. Chuck is drowning, but don't worry, Flipper is on the case. And just before he dies, he has time for one last starting realization. Shit, I forgot to schedule swimming lessons. The dolphins don't really seem to be in any rush to save him. Okay, come on, dude. He's been underwater for like five minutes now. I'd say he probably has long-term brain damage, but really, how do we tell? Back on land, I zoom. Drink again. Chuck, meanwhile, just washes up on shore. <laughs> I think we've all been there. He's like, shit, I think I forgot to put the garbage out. And just like that, the odd couple is back on the road to sexy C-3PO's place. They better really hoof it because we have like 15 minutes of movie left. We still have to cross too much open ground. We'll rest now. Oh yeah, sure, just stop and rest. No rush or anything. Unlike the Yada Glanchi, these two do not sleep nose to anus. Wookiees show up and Cardilius off into the night. Again. What a hero. This must have been filmed during a brief phase where Fulci was just fascinated with people jumping. I mean, there's a House of Pain slash Criss Cross level of jumping in this film. See? I wasn't kidding. After some combat, which I'm not showing because it's so poorly lit you literally can't see anything, Chuck decides to get in a workout with his shake weight. When his workout finished, he makes a startling discovery. Ilias. 
<laughs> yeah, dude really lost his head over all of this. <laughs> what a hero. Ilias may have lost his head, but that doesn't mean Fulci won't give him one more eye zoom. Decapitation eye zoom is a double drink. Meanwhile, Chuck finally gets to give Ilias that Viking funeral and have one more startling realization. Shit, did I remember to check his pulse and make sure he was actually dead before I lit him on fire? Really, the best way to cook your Ilias is grilled over an open flame. Anyway, I don't want to rush you, Lucio, but there's six minutes left in this movie. We might want to get a climax rolling at some point. Or just have Chuck rub Ilias ash all over himself. I mean, you're the director, and this gives Chuck one more chance to flex. Revenge. Revenge. With that over, we finally decide to get to an ending. Nice work, Fulci. Chuck summons the magic bow and does his best Robin Hood impression. Maybe Fulci was right. His ending doesn't really need more than two minutes. Chuck lines up one last magic missile and blasts sexy C-3PO right in the face. Hell yeah. Don't even start, Danny. Man, no wonder she wore that mask. She looks worse than Vader at the end of Return of the Jedi. Chuck has one last realization. Shit, I think I forgot me and Ilias' anniversary. He sends one more arrow into 3PO and she... turns into a dog? Okay, maybe Fulci did hate women. I'm kidding. Maybe. With his work done, Chuck walks off into the sunset. Shit, did I leave my wallet back at 3PO's place? Followed by a freeze frame and this end card. Thanks for clarifying that, movie. I was thoroughly convinced that Chuck was based on a guy I see in the gym all the time. Glad that wasn't the case. So, what have we learned from Conquest? Well, for starters, Fulci can make a bad movie in genres other than horror. I'm kidding. I mean, Conquest is not a good movie by any conventional metric, but it's so terrible that you wind up loving it. It's clear the Godfather of Gore was outside his comfort zone in this one, but that's part of its charm. It just meanders all over the place for 88 minutes and then wraps up in like 90 seconds. But enough about that. Can Conquest slaughter enough random high fantasy monsters to earn another five barf bag rating for Fulci? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Conquest definitely delivers. We're treated to multiple split heads, a decapitation, oozing pustules, 3PO's face reveal, and a woman split like a wishbone. In an odd twist, the gore effects here aren't up to the standards of Fulci's classic horror output, but there's enough here to give Conquest a respectable three barf bag rating. This is not a super sick flick by Fulci standards, but it's so batshit insane you should definitely see it anyway. Looking for more Fulci gore? Then be sure to check out my review of Zombie. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.